we were talking about endotoxins. So endotoxins are part of the cell wall of gram-negative bacteria. And what they do to us is highly irritate our immune system and cause inflama inflammation systemically. We have a fancy name for that. It's called uh, the cytokine storm. I'm going to use an orange for that. Cytokines are little chemicals, and a storm would be a lot of them, right? Sure enough, there's a lot of these little chemicals that cause inflammation throughout your body. So if there's a gram-negative infection that gets into the bloodstream, it can cause systemically a fever, body aches, or if, even if any of, the gram, any of that lipid A gets into the bloodstream. Leaky blood vessels, This would be if it's systemic, or in if that's systemic, then yikes. You're going to have a drop in blood pressure. We call that shock. Precipitous drop in blood pressure. And the scary thing about that is it can lead to organ failure because if the organs aren't getting enough blood, then they can stop working. And then one final scary symptom of a cytokine storm is what's known as DIC, or disseminated, meaning spread out, intravascular clotting. So little tiny strokes could occur all throughout the patient. This is um, an example of septic shock. So septic shock is when blood pressure drops precipitously due to a bacterial or pathogenic infection that is in the bloodstream. And this can be caused by a gram-negative bacteria. Now, they're not the only ones that can cause a cytokine storm. I'm going to use a purple and show you that it is possible for gram-positive to do this too with the production of some exotoxins. And usually, though, if, if uh, gram-positive bacteria are doing this, instead of calling it just a, uh, causing a cytokine storm because of the lipid A, the effect is usually due to uh, what's called a super antigen. And it's called a super antigen because it is super irritating to your immune system, which then does all of these things to try and fight it off. But it ends up being counterproductive. It is... Um, decompensatory, meaning that our body's overreaction can actually cause our own organs to fail. Okay, let's look a, a little more at some other exotoxins besides superantigens. So I'm going to use purple over here because gram-positive bacteria are more well-known for their exotoxins. That doesn't mean there are no exotoxins from gram-negative bacteria but gram-positive is a little bit better known for that. Okay, so make a purple line to this first one. Cytotoxins. Cytotoxins are toxic to cells. And usually when we talk about a cytotoxin, we're talking about red blood cells. So these are toxins that can destroy red blood cells and sometimes white blood cells. Streptococcus pyogenes, we use green again when we talk about a specific organism. Is beta hemolytic. 
So remember in lab you test um, to find out which bacteria is able to destroy red blood cells and Streptococcus pyogenes is very good at that because it has a cytotoxins that damage our blood cells. Another kind of exotoxin that bacteria may make are neurotoxins. You can see right in there that it's going to affect uh, nervous transmission. So you can take a blue pen and put a bunch of neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft. That's what you're looking at here. This is a synapse. And take a red pen and block those receptors. Bam, bam, bam. Now the signal can't get across the synaptic cleft. So the toxin blocks transmission, and again, using your green pen for an example, Clostridium botulinum is an example here, makes an exotoxin that blocks transmission. Similar, but just a little bit different, Clostridium tetani overstimulates the receptors and doesn't allow the signal, the transmission to end and that causes cramping, so that's overstimulating. And again with our green pen for the example, C. tetani. And another type of toxin is called an enterotoxin. Entero means intestine, so this is a toxin made by some gram-positive bacteria that can cause diarrhea. Usually what these kind of enterotoxins do is they cause potassium to leak out of the cells and into the intestine and then water follows rapidly and that's going to cause diarrhea and dehydration with enterotoxins. This is, um, and enterotoxins are often made by things like E. coli and Vibrio cholera salmonella, those are gram-negatives that can make enterotoxins. So even though we said usually gram-positive, it's not exclusively gram-positive that makes enterotoxins. However, it is exclusively, exclusively gram-negative that has gram or has endotoxin as part of its makeup.